श्री गणेशाय नम ओम श्री सरस्वत नम ओम श्री गुरुदेवाय नम समस्त जन कल्याण निरत करुणामय नमा चिन्मय देव सद्गु ब्रह्म विद्वर ओके सो नाउ वी हैव टू सी दुरुजीज मोस्ट वंडरफुल लिटल टेक्स्ट इट इज कॉल सुबोध वेदांत So the text is made up of two. The title is made up of two words: Subodha, Vedanta. Subodha means easily understood. Subodha, or simple, hmm? easily understood. So, and Vedanta. Vedanta means Upanishads. Upanishad. Other name is called as Vedanta. Hmm? and what exactly is the core principle of vedanta what exactly is the main teaching of the upanishad see upanishad may have this thing that thing so many things right but the main teaching to be found there in that upanishad is jiva brahma aikya hmm? you please say this phrase jiva brahma aikya na huh? that is the oneness between jiva and brahma the absolute reality now if you just analyze that statement little bit you will realize that if there is a oneness between jiva and brahma the absolute reality oneness means both are one and same if you just think about that little bit and you extend the logical connotation of that phrase what it will mean it will mean that really speaking there is only one thing in the universe the universe doesn't have two things the universe only has one thing because if the jiva and the brahma is one then you don't have two you have one and every other thing in the universe actually is part and parcel of that one thing so sometimes we say jiva jagat and jagadeeshwara three j's you know jiva jagat jagadeeshwara they are all one and same this is the teaching of vedanta so such simple teaching look here if you have one there is no complexity the moment you have two all complexities start hmm you know that when you are living by yourself everything is very simple you know when you get somebody else in your life then everything becomes ah <coughs> one fellow is to <coughs> pass and give to a beggar 10 <coughs> <Ten rupees. coughs> you to pass and give to that beggar 10 rupees so he did it for quite some time And then suddenly one day he started giving that beggar only 5 rupees. And then that beggar received 5 rupees and uh, he did not say anything. Then after some time he started giving only 1 rupee. Now this time the beggar could not take that thing, you know. Which beggar want 1 rupee only? no beggar will want one they'll give it back <laughs> so he, the beggar stopped him hey what is this you used to give me 10 rupees then suddenly you started giving 5 rupees then now you only giving 1 rupee what is this thing he said well well you see my dear beggar before i was alone unmarried you know so i could have offered it to give you 10 rupees 
Then I got married. Then I could not afford 10 rupees anymore. So I started giving you 5 rupees. <coughs> then after some time, one little munna came. <laughs> so then I could not afford to give you 5 even. Now I am giving you 1. Then Dega said, what is this? You are raising your family on my money. Now see, when he was alone, that living was very simple, isn't it? Well, alone, everything is very simple. You introduce one that becomes more complex now. That beggar also is wondering what is going on. Another one comes then, more complexity, you see? So, really speaking, because Vedanta teaches that there is only one thing in this world, in this universe, Vedanta is very simple. Actually, because we refuse to see the one thing, our life remains complex. But the one who is able to see that one thing, his life will become very, very simple, I tell you. They come to recognize and appreciate the one thing which is there in the universe. The one who can do that, his life will become totally simple. But you know, human beings don't like one thing. If you go to the shoe store and only one type of shoe is there, you say, Bapri, what type of shoe store is this, you know? You want to have a? Yeah, variety that must be there. And we make statements also, variety is the spice of life. So you want your life to be spicy. So you have to have variety. But really, one who can see beyond the diversity, beyond the, the variety, beyond the multiplicity, who can see beyond that and see the one thing. Avibhaktam vibhakteshu vibhaktam vivachasthitam Bhagavan says in 13th chapter. That, that's the one thing which is there pervading the whole universe and undivided but appears divided. It, the Lord appears to be divided, but I'll show you, if you just do a little bit of thinking, you will see not divided. Look here. This thing exists or not? It exists. I exist. You exist. The space between us exists. Well, there is existence in every single thing. In other words, existence is not broken up. Where the existence of microphone star stops, the existence of space starts. And where the existence of space stops, you start. And then there's existence, existence everywhere in the whole. Even on a vacuum, the vacuum exists or not? The vacuum exists, isn't it? There's existence of a vacuum. So there's only pure existence in Sanskrit. That existence is called as Sat. So this is Vedanta. There's only one existence. Just like, you know, you go to a, a potter's shop where they make clay objects, you know. He takes that one clay and he makes a dog. He takes the same clay and makes a cow. Same clay and makes an elephant. And he makes a pot and a plate and a cup and a spoon. And so everything is made from clay. In other words, clay lends itself to taking on any Nama Rupa. Isn't it? The clay can lend itself to that in the very same way. Sat, the existence, lends itself to taking on any nama, rupa. This is just like the, oh, the, the difference between clay and sat is clay can only take on a finite number of nama rupa. Sat, existence, can take on infinite number of nama rupa. See, that is the only difference. Because, for example, clay can make a dog, elephant, you know, giraffe, whatever, but you cannot take clay and make a thought. How you take clay and make it into a thought? You cannot do. But existence can also be made into a thought, because the thought exists or not? The thought exists. It is made up of existence only. Sat. That same sat is called as chit, the same chit is called as ananda. 
Now, this is the Vedanta. This is your, this, the uh, end all and be all of Vedanta. Right? This is right there. It is done. That means to say, I am Sat, you are Sat, the space is Sat, everything is Sat. Isha Vasya Midam Sarvam. Tulsi Daji says, Siya Ram, May Sabha Jagat Jani. Everything is Ram. So, like that, the scriptures go on telling so many words. Everything is the, just that one reality. But the human being is such, he gets taken up with the Nama Rupa and he forgets the substance, the fundamental substance, which is existence. He gets overwhelmed by, by Nama Rupa and he forgets the substratum or the substance, the existence. This is his problem. And he is so adamant about the Nama Rupa, he couldn't care less about that substance. This is a human problem. We are so taken up with Nama Rupa. Amazing. This little thing, if you think about in your life, your, all your Vedanta will take root. We are absolutely overwhelmed by Nama Rupa, which really is of no consequence. The thing which is of no consequence, we get taken up with that thing. That, you know, is tantamount to what? Suppose somebody gives you a nice looking gift for Diwali or something. Hmm? So there's a most beautiful bow and most beautiful ribbons and gift wrap and everything. And when you get that gift, you're so enamored by the bow and the ribbon and the color of the gift wrap and all of that. You are so taken up by that, you totally forget what to see, what to uh, what is inside the box. Nobody does that. But it will be like that only. That you get enamored, overwhelmed by the gift wrap and by the, you know, ribbon and all that. And the bow. And you never bother to look what is inside there. So this is exactly what we get taken up by Nama, Rupa. And, and it, it, the disease is very, very, very embedded in our consciousness. Huh? I tell you, the moment you go anywhere in this world and you see another person wearing kurta or sari, suppose you go to Japan and then you see another person wearing some clothes like you, Nama Rupa immediately takes over, isn't it? That person may be Gunda. You don't know. But Nama Rupa, you quickly, you get taken over by that, isn't it? So like this, the human being is taken over by the thing which is of no substance, no consequence, really. And the thing which is of substance, which is of consequence, which is that which is the substratum, he forgets. He never sees that thing. I tell you, there was an, a wonderful story of a fellow he was working in one of the car automobile factories. He was the security guard at the gate. So his boss instructed him, you know these workers, when they come out on evenings after work, they steal auto parts. So they hide it in their car. So you stop every car by this gate when they're going out. And you check. The boss instructed him, he was checking. New worker, instruction he is followed. Now, one particular fellow, he was looking very suspicious. So he said, open your trunk. He opened. No, there was nothing. Maybe he, he, he hid something under his hood. He made him open the hood. Then he looked inside the car, everything. Like that, this fellow was looking very suspicious every day. And this security guard was checking every day and could not find anything. Five days passed like that, and he was scratching his head and thinking, what, this fellow looks so suspicious, you know. But yeah, I can't get nuts. I'm not finding any parts which he's stealing. On Monday morning, next week when they came, there was a big bulletin on the board. Five cars were missing. <laughs> he's stealing a car every day. The whole thing. So the most obvious thing he misses. The security guard misses the most. Obvious thing. Nama Rupa 
could have no existence without the substratum. But we get taken up by the Nama Rupa and not the substratum. See that thing? The most obvious thing we, we miss that thing. See, see here, this thing is Nama Rupa, right? The Nama is stone, rock, Nama. Rupa, oval shape, let us say, right? Then, beneath that, there is some hard mineral, right? So now, Rupa and Nama and mineral, three things. Rupa oval shape, and this one is more oval. Oval shape, Rupa. Nama, stone, and then there's mineral. From three things, I'm only going to remove one. Mineral. So I take one molecule of mineral and I keep it there. Then I remove all the molecules of mineral from here. Then what happens to the other two things? Nothing will be there, isn't it? Remember, I only remove one. I did not remove three. I'm only removing atom or molecule of mineral, one by one. It means without the fundamental mineral, the substance, Nama Rupa have no existence. Actually speaking, we say Nama Rupa is really unreal in Vedanta. It's just an appearance. It's an Abhasa Rupa. It doesn't have any substantial existence per se. You see? The real existence is Sat. But the human being has this weakness where he gets overwhelmed by the Nama Rupa and forgets the, and therefore, when Bhagwan teaches to Arjuna at the end of Gita, he asks, now, did you learn what I, what I, what I taught? No, Arjuna said, Prabhu, Smritir Labdha. Means to say, I now remember what exactly I am all about. This is our problem, we just, just forgotten ourselves. We have forgotten the existence. And we are taking up it in the Nama Rupa of. It's just a matter of remembering. You can't get, eh? You can't get yourself. We cannot get ourselves. I am what I am. We can only remember, actually. We just forgot. Hmm? <laughs> One fellow went to a doctor. The doctor, I have a big problem. What is your problem? I forget everything. What is your age now? <clears throat> he said, I am only 49. Oh. Well, how long you have been having this problem? He said, what problem? <laughs> <laughs> that also forgot you. So, the human being is in this state. He has just forgotten himself. That is all. All this Vedanta and all this, you know, whatever we study, it is just to remember our own self. You can't get yourself. You cannot reach yourself. You cannot be yourself. Please see how. How you will get yourself? That means to say like yourself is there in San Francisco and you will go get it? You can't get yourself. You cannot be yourself because you already are your self. No, only I can remember. See, I may forget myself and I'm, I'm thinking I'm something else. I'm, it's just a mistake. So I am that pure existence and I just have to remember that. Bus. All of us sadhana and all is for that only. Now, when this thing is presented, one thing about our Hinduism, you know, we have volumes and volumes of literature. Our Sanatana Dharma, we say 
why you must only have one text we have so many texts you cannot finish in 10 lifetimes even why you must only have one form of god everything is so vast in this you know we have so many forms of god and all that so that has ev- like everything in the universe there will be plus point and there will be minus point you see this is a good book weight paper weight <laughs> but if it falls on your toe <laughs> so it has plus points and eh? yeah positive and negative everything like that so we have a vast amount of scriptures shastras and this and that and that is to show that the reality can be seen from so many angles that is plus point you can see from that but then it becomes so much it becomes overbearing overwhelming isn't it and people get confused and all oh, this shastra is saying this this is saying that that one is saying that oh, no. so to see the one is in all the shastra that all that also is a big task you see so guru ji now in this text yeah, he has tried to make make all of these vedanta very very simple for us to understand so now we will also try to keep it simple as we go along and if you remember it is all to remember what we ah you study 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 but the one goal only is there one and simple goal and you see you don't get anything you cannot get you don't gain praptasya prapti it is called it is the gaining of what is already gained so don't expect that you know i will get something other is human beings they are what goal oriented they they are under classes going let us go there you tell somebody then he what i'll get first he wants to know what he'll get so if he doesn't know anything about vedanta tell him he'll get prasad <laughs> so people want to know something now let us see this vedant this is subodha vedant of guruji very simple now guruji himself tells that he was just toying with the idea you know in in jest is what he uses is jest means in just um, playing around with the idea and then these verses came to him and he wrote trying to make it very very simple and you can read the introduction there then you will see how guruji came upon this text now i will chant the verses and you try to repeat and then we will see the meaning just like all classical texts in vedanta he does salutations to lord ganesh salutations to mata saraswati then salutations to gurudev to guru and then to guruji's ishta devta with bhagwan ram like that in the same order he does salutations so now see this salutations first then we will see the meanings and all and this we will see the importance of it vaktum subodha vedantam pravritto hyabudho pyaham कृपया यतम वंदे श्री गणेश पुनः पुनः वंदे सरस्वती देवी देवी सद्गुरु मे महात्म महामति सीता समेत श्रीराम यु शुभता मति श्री गणेश वंदे पुनः पुनः मीन्स अगेन एंड अगेन आई डू सैल्यूटेशन फ्रस्ट्रेशन टू लॉर्ड गणेश वी हैव इन अवर ट्रेडिशन यू नो सो मेनी वंडरफुल फॉर्म्स ऑफ गॉड एंड Bhagwan has taken so many wonderful forms, and all of the forms teach so many wonderful things. Eh? You just have to study them. Those who don't study, then they make comments from outside. That is like you looking at Shrikand. 
the same Gujarati people make some nice Shrikand. You look from outside and you say, eh. Whatever, you can't make comment until you have? <laughs> Taste some Shrikand, then you will. No, then you can say something. And he's looking, nah, it looks yucky. <laughs> no. So, in, in the same way, people look. I, I, I'm telling this because I was walking one day in, in New York City, and there's an area there where there are many shops that sell murtis and all. And uh, there was a big murti of Lord Ganesh outside. And uh, two American uh, persons were passing, and when they saw it, they were turned off. It means just, you have to delve into it, then you will know, isn't it? When you go into that, it's so wonderful. So, <coughs> salutations to this Lord Ganesh. Kripaya yasyatam. To him, by whose kripa, by whose grace, by whose blessings, vaktum subodha vedantam pravittaha hi abudaha api aham. What a nice line it is. By whose grace I proceed now to expound this Subodha Vedanta, this simple, easily understood Vedanta. Huh? He said, I proceed to expound this simple Vedanta by the grace of Lord Ganesh. To that Lord Ganesh, salutations. This is the idea. And the last phrase of the first line is so nice. He says, he... Abudha apiaham, even though I am Abudha, even though I am ignorant. Look here, all of you who are sitting here, you have either seen Guruji or you know Guruji through his works and everything, isn't it? Where in the world today we will find a Mahatma with that? degree of knowledge, with that degree of, um, who do people call a walking library? Huh? Of understanding of Vedanta, where we'll find it. And he's saying, I'm a Buddha. In the world today, we'll not find somebody. You see, just now, I had gone to, uh, um, uh, Bahamas is there, you know. I had gone to the Bahamas for Yajna there. This is not in my mission ashram. This is some other sambradaya. There were five, uh, ten Caucasian teachers are there. All Caucasian people. They're teaching all different yoga and this and that. Then, one of them told me, I'm going to Rishikesh. Uh, not to Rishikesh, Tadkashi. I said, why? He said, they, they're going to do Shankara Bhashya Parayan. And it is led by Swami Tejo Mayananji. And he was very happy to, to go there. So, who doesn't know Guruji also? These people don't belong to Chinmay Mission also. But he is going there to listen to that thing. So a Mahatma of this caliber, and he is saying that he is ignorant and I'll tell you this is a very very important point if you see Ramayan we might see we'll see now because we're doing Sundar Khand also huh? Ravan is introduced in Aranya Khand Tuthidashi does all salutations and all in Bal Khand but Ravan really enters the story in Aranya Khand and the very introduction of Ravan is he goes to meet his his uncle, Maharaj. So the, the first conversation he's having really, he, of course first he has a conversation with his sister that he called Shurpanakha. And then she is the one who causes him to go to Maharaj. And in that first conversation, the two <coughs> very, very strong gunas which come out in Ravan is, Ravan is proud of his power. He asks, where is there any greater soldier than me? Huh? And second, right there in that same conversation where he's introduced, Ravan is very proud of his knowledge. 
he tells to Marish, so you're trying to be my guru or what? Even though Marish has much more, much more experience and knowledge than, well, not knowledge, but much more experience and, and, and all that than Ravan. So Ravan was very proud of his knowledge. And this, these two Durgunas actually caused him not to listen to any good counsel. He'll never listen to anybody because he feels that he knows better than. And so this thing is one of the greatest downfall of any sadhaka. That I feel that I know and nobody else knows. And if you really do a little bit of analysis, huh? you're like, what analysis? Look here. You make two lists. Two lists here, right? All the things which I know, list. All the things which I don't know, list. Yeah. You tell now, which list will be longer? You see, this list has no end. You did not know that you did not know so many things also. And one more thing about that, you know. See that. Maya is na apu kahu, jaan kahi aso jeevo raam, jaan kahi aso jeevo. Band mocha prad sarva para, maya prerak sivasiya, var raam chandra ki jai sharanam. Lakshmana is asking to Bhagavan Ram in Aranyakan, he said, who is this Jiva? What is the difference between Jiva and Ishvara? What is the difference between Jiva and Ishvara? He said, look here, my dear Lakshmana. Jiva is the one who knows nothing about this world. He knows nothing about himself. And he knows nothing about Bhagavan. That is Jiva. And what is the ironic thing? Jiva thinks he knows everything. <laughs> he knows nothing about himself, this world, or Ishwara, Bhagwan. So the list, you make these two, and you see all the things which we think we know. Here. And now you take one, of, one by one of these things, and you will see, really we don't know. We think we know. Cutting edge technology also does not know. What we know, you know? Look here. I, 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 very wonderfully, I was trying to verify these things. I was somebody from Harvard. He was driving me to Yagnya. Scientist. So I said, what do you do, professor? He said, I do research in um, anesthesiology and all of these things. He's doing research in. So then I remember when high school they used to teach us all of these little things. So I was just asking, you know, the synapse of one nerve cell is like this, right? And the, the message jumps over the synapses from one to the other, and there's a gap, but they don't touch. So how that message from one nerve cell jumps to the, to the other? He said, Swamiji, we know it happens, we don't know how. means you may surmise or you may come up with a theory or you may come up and, and that theory will last 10 years and after 10 years they will we don't know we think we know so if you take the things here also all we can say okay we know it is working we know it is working but how exactly is it So a very important thing, each person should think that really there is so much of knowledge in this universe, we could never ever know anything. There's one more reason why you cannot know everything also. Eh? Because, see, the universe is called as Vaya Swarupa. Vaya Swarupa means what? It is all the time changing, correct? 
So if something is changing, and by the time you know it, it has already? Oh, you know it. You can't. And therefore there is one thing which is avyaya. That thing I have to know. Because you can't know something which is? Ah. So, the, this is supposed to temper the jiva's mind, which is usually overwhelmed by his knowledge and he thinks too much. Too much of himself because I, I know this and I know that and, and that becomes a big stumbling block. So in the first line, that becomes a big stumbling block. In the first line itself, that has to be removed. Really. Right now, it appears to me like that. That is all. Ram Krishna Paramahamsa is telling a nice story. He said, one man was sleeping under a tree. Then, living under a tree. And one traveler came and he rested under that tree for one hour. And on that tree there was a lizard. He rested there for an hour and went. Another traveler came. After some time, rested there for another hour and he also went. And then those two travelers, they met in another village. So then he, he said, I, I rested under such and such tree and there was a green lizard there. That other fellow said, it was not a green lizard, it was a brown lizard, I also saw. <laughs> so the two of them were arguing. A green lizard or brown lizard. Then they said, okay, let us go back, there was a man sleeping there. There was a man living there, we'll ask him. They came back there. And they, one said it was a green lizard, the other said it was a brown lizard. They asked this man, green lizard or brown lizard? He said, it is any color lizard. <laughs> because that lizard changes its color according to its own whims and fancies, you see. And when you came it was green, when he came it was brown. So what is the true color of the lizard? Even this fellow doesn't know. You can't tell, you see. So the world is like that thing. Huh? So he says, as, uh, if a Mahatma of that caliber can say, I am ignorant, where does that leave us? So he says, even though I am ignorant, in other words, what Guruji is doing there very nicely now, you know, so we should take such nice um, cue from Guruji, you know. Look, let me put my ego my knowledge, put everything aside and let Bhagwan flow through me and get this text written. That is the idea. Hmm? So I, I do salutations to that Lord Ganesh, who is, by whose grace, this text is going to be written now in Ved Vyasji. Ved Vyasji also invoked Lord Ganesh to come and write, see? Vande Saraswati Devi, goddess of knowledge. May she bring all the knowledge into these verses so that it can go down to subsequent generations and to people down the ages. Salutations to the Saraswati and Guru. Salutations to the Guru. So Ganesh Saraswati, Guru, this is the tradition in this order. And then finally, to his Ishta Devata Sita Ram. Sita Samet Shri Ram Yachantu Shuvadam Matim May they grace my intellect with auspicious thoughts. May they grace this intellect with auspicious thoughts so that this intellect can now expound this Vedanta in a very simple fashion. And no, no text begins without this invocation. Uh, in the beginning, eh? all the texts will be like that. There is a Mangala Charan, we call it. And there are Mangala Charan of different types. One type of Mangala Charan is what is called as Vastu Nirdesha. Mangala Charan means it points out the reality. And one type of Mangala Charan is Ishta Devata Nirdesha. Means it point it does salutation to the Ishta Devata. So that is of this type. So he's not pointing out the reality yet because Guruji is trying to keep this text very 
simple. Now, in Vedanta, I told you there is only one thing, and that is the absolute reality, the substratum of the universe. It is called as existence, and I am that thing already. I can't get it. I cannot be it because I you cannot be what something that you are not. You are already it. You see, you cannot get it, be it, reach it. Only thing is, I can remember it. That is all. Huh? So for that now, because this student has gone a long way from home, we have gone a long way from home mm, for so many lifetimes. Now we have to come back to home. And the distance is not a distance in terms of space. The distance is a distance in terms of how long I have forgotten, isn't it? And how many things I have embedded on my mind which have shrouded that reality which is in me, or which is me. You see, it is not a distance in time. I have gone away so far from myself. It means to say so many lifetimes I have embedded upon my mind that I am body-mind, intellect. And because, of, and I tell you, we have a knack for complicating things. Eh? We love to complicate everything. To see that you in Uttarakhand in the end. Sarala subhavana mana kutilai jatha lab santosha sadai. Means we should have sarala subhav means very simple. But we like to complicate things. Huh? Bhagwan has made an orange. We should pick the orange and eat. He has made water. Take the water and drink. No, too simple. Take the orange and squeeze it in the water. <laughs> now we mix the two, right? Then we get orange juice. Let me taste it. Eh, bland thing. Add sugar now. Again, till that, still not good. Huh? Put some ice. Yeah. So now, see, we, and now, and we know, biology tells, the digestive system works with a little bit of heat, you know? Yes. So we put ice in there, and we put a damper on the entire digestive system. We are complicating things. Just take the water and drink. Take the orange and eat like that. But it's simple. But we love to make things complex and complicated. So, he said, <coughs> remain very, very simple to see that. Yes. This is the mark of a true devotee. Now, so here, <coughs> the one uh, simple thing now is for us to just realize the one reality which I am. We don't get it. We don't reach it. We don't acquire it. You can't, uh, any, any such thing. We just remember. And because we have packed all of these complexities in our mind, oh, this head has become heavy. We, and we go on fabricating new ones every day, you know. So many complexities. So now slowly, slowly again, we have to start peeling off the layers like the onion, you know. Peel off, peel off layers. So from the beginning now, his Vedanta is, is presented by Puja Guruji. Now see this verse number one, number two of the qualification of a student. How this student, this will be page number five in this book. I don't know if you have the same edition. <coughs> now see. Purvarjitena punyena Sarvesha nugrahe nacha Jayate tatva jignasa Preeter yasya paratmani Kripa patrasa evayam 
गुरुं सेवेत भक्तितः भवेते नैव योगश योग्यश्च साधना भ्यास तत्परह पूर्व अर्जिते न पुण्ये न सर्वेश सर्वेश सर्व ईशा अनुग्रहे न च means to say due to or by all punya karmas which this student has done in past lives and also in this life because purva purva means before so you can be in this life also before today hmm? now see the first thing therefore for any student to come to vedanta to come to this is that we should have done a lot of punya karma the fact that we are all sitting here today is sufficient testimony to that thing otherwise we will not be here some good thing we have would have done so now we have come to this vedanta huh? but we should not be you know, they said that people who win lottery their lives become ruined have you heard so you you get a, a windfall you get a windfall but instead of using the windfall for something use it for something not good so now that we have the opportunity we should use this opportunity so because of punya karma of so many lifetimes this uh, shishya student sarve sarva ish anugrahena and by the grace and blessing of the lord of the whole universe in grace of the lord who is the lord of the whole universe sarva ish he means the lord of all jayate tatva jignasa is born in the mind of this jiva jignasa means desire to know what tatva and priter yasya paratmani and <coughs> a love for the supreme self so how do we develop a desire to know the reality and how do we deserve, develop a desire a love for bhagwan by purva punya karma that means to say what even though i may not know vedanta i may not know sanskrit i may not know this know that all these things at least i can do some punya karma hmm. that punya karma is of and that also in so many varieties and forms and hinduism is a wonderful thing we can do punya karma in so many ways hmm. so right now i have to find myself make sure that i am doing some punya karma as such a person kripa patra sa evayam he being now a fit recipient of kripa compassion of guru gurum seveta bhakti taha he finds some teacher some guru and look here if that person has done sufficient punya karma if he has uh, really engaged himself sincerely in punya karma he doesn't have to go looking for any guru guru will come right where he is hmm? because in any case he has only done punya karma he doesn't have knowledge how will know who is guru and who is not guru so instead of him going to look for guru the guru will come to that person enough punya karma some guru will show up in his life. and that person now has to do seva for that guru so guru me eva vikat chet samit pani shrutriyam brahmanishtam this is upanishad but in bhagavad gita bhagwan tells a very nice thing he says tad vidhi pranipate na pari prashne na sevaya upadekshyanti te gnanam gnaninah tattva dashinam this person he goes now that guru approaches the person approaches the guru guru comes person approaches and tells oh my dear guru will you teach me and he has to do seva for the guru seva is very important so guruji mentioned this thing seva the comes from gita there pari prashnena sevaya to do say you know why i tell you one more thing you if you have not read i have heard from guruji himself telling that 
Guruji was studying and then Gurudev came to his place for Yajna. See, Guru came there for Yajna. And then Guruji left that place and came to Mumbai Ashram. And he was there for a long period only doing seva. There was no course going on. No Vedanta course was going on. He was only in the ashram doing seva. So, this is actually generally the process by how that student comes and stays with that. In the Upanishad also, the Guru, the, the Shishya comes to that ashram and the Guru tells, okay, see these ten cows, you take it and go to the forest there. And when this cow, this herd has become a hundred, you come back. How long will it take ten cows to become a hundred? But the Shishya, with great Shraddha and with great Seva Bhav, he he goes and he said when he come, came back, and the, the Guru said, okay, sit. And in no time, he learned everything. But in our case, we want, okay, first you teach me, then I will do seva. <laughs> but Guruji followed the tradition like that. So therefore he's saying here, you know, this, this disciple, it does seva for the Guru. And he only got an opportunity to do seva for the Guru because he did many punya karma in his yeah, previous life and past, like that. And bhavet tena eva yogyascha sadhana bhyasa tatparaha And by doing that seva to the Guru, this shishya now becomes a fit recipient for the teachings which the Guru will give. And teaching is only about sadhana. I just told you, nobody can give you what you are. Isn't it? Nobody can take you where you are. You say, take me here. Who oh, will take you here? You are already here. Isn't it? So nobody can bring what you are. Nobody can take you where you are. Nobody can make you into what you are. You already have that thing. So the Guru can only give now all guidance, sadhana, to practice, all such things to do so that you will just remember your own self. So that is called a sadhana abhyas. Sadhana abhyas. You see? So he will teach that thing. And only by following this process that person becomes a fit recipient for this sadhana abhyasa. I mean, he has to do punya karma, and then the guru will appear in his life, and he has to approach that guru and to seva. And by doing that seva, the guru will now give knowledge. Now, in the next section, the qualifications of this student will be given, and also qualifications of guru will be given. Two things. Hmm? What qualification, or what things this student has to develop now by the guidance of the Guru? And what are the qualifications of that Guru also? Because you cannot go just... Uh, of course, every, anything in this world can be Guru, but for Advaita Vedanta, we need somebody who is himself established in Advaita Vedanta. So both the qualifications of student and qualifications of Guru will be given, but we'll have to see that tomorrow. Same time. Same place. <laughs> okay. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Pyo Namaha Hari Om